What up, y'all? It's Bum, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, April 4th, 2017, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio. Heart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. The first two episodes of Season 3 for Fear of the Walking Dead are to premiere June 4th on AMC. Set on the west coast of the United States, the drama stars Kim Dickens, Cliff Curtis, Frank Delane, Alicia Demnam Carey, Mercedes Mason, Coleman Domingo, and Danny Garcia as survivors of a zombie apocalypse. The cable network said in a press release, our families will be brought together in the vibrant and violent region formerly known as the U.S.-Mexico border. International lines done away with following the world's end. Our characters must attempt to rebuild not only society, but family as well. Madison has reconnected with Travis, her apocalyptic partner, but Alicia has been fractured by her murder of Andreas. Mason's uh, son is only a few miles from his mother, but Nick's first action as a leader saw him and Luciana ambushed by an American militia group. The couple escaped death. Lu- Luciana was shot, and Nick no longer feels immortal. Recovering both emotional and physically, stranded Strand has his sights set on harnessing the new world's currency, and Ophelia's captivity will test her ability to survive and see if she can muster the savagery of her father. The first two seasons of the show may be streamed via the subscription service Hulu. AMC has released a first look video for season two of its supernatural drama Preacher, starring Dominic Cooper, Joe Gilgon, and Ruth Nega. The graphic novel series was developed for television by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. It follows the violent adventures of West Texas preacher Jesse Custard, his badass girl, ex girlfriend Tulip, and an Irish vampire named Cassidy as they embark on a road trip to find God and are thrust into a twisted battle spanning heaven, hell, and everywhere in between, a synopsis explains. The 13 episode so the second edition is scheduled to begin on June 25th. Monday's teaser showed Jesse, Tulip, and Cassie driving fast, as well as running from and fighting with the various people chasing them, all while the pop song Come On Eileen by Dexie's Midnight Runners plays in the background. Season 1 consisted of 10 episodes aired on the cable network last year. It will be available for streaming exclusively on the subscription service Hulu beginning Wednesday. USA Network says it has ordered additional episodes of Falling Water starring Lizzie Brochet, David Ajala, and Will Young Lee. The show's Twitter account said Monday, your dreams are coming true. Hashtag Falling Water has been renewed for season two. The program is from executive producers Gail Ann Hurd, Blake Masters, the late Henry Brommel, and Juan Carlos Frizzinadio. Remy uh, Burchan will serve as the series showrunner for season two. The show puts together three unrelated people with the abilities to manipulate dreams and the people who conjured them up in their sleep. Christmas Cumber, the president of entertainment networks for NBC Universal Cable Entertainment, said in a statement Monday, Falling Water turns a traditional dramatic thriller on its head by tapping into the power of something we all have access to dreams. We look forward to continuing this ball completely unique story. Jeff Watchell, the Jeff uh, the president and chief content officer of NBC Universal Cable Network says, with its striking visuals and stylized narrative, Falling Water creates a world where dreams have a dramatic impact on reality. Gail and Blake execute a thought-provoking and resonate first season. We're delighted to welcome Remy to the creative team and we can't wait to see where he takes us next. Laughing at the president is a proud American tradition, said Anthony Antimic. And if he does it right, we'll also be laughing with him. Antimic will star as President Trump in a new Comedy Central series the network announced Monday. The President show will air Thursdays following The Daily Show with Trevor Noah at 11.30 p.m. starting on April 27th. Antimonic Trump will host a late-night show directed from the Oval Office, joined by sidekick Mike Pence, played by Peter Gross. The network said in a news release, just like a certain chief executive in Washington, the president show gleefully tosses out the rule book of its predecessors. Added Atomic, mostly I'd just like to thank Comedy Central for giving us this platform to speak truth to power, and if we're lucky, end up in prison. 
Olivia Wilde, who wrapped up two movies, will make her Broadway debut in June. She will co-star with Tom Serge Ridge and Reed Brittany in a new stage adaptation of George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984. Wilde, Sturridge, and Brittany will play the novel's classic characters, Julia Winston, Smith, and O'Brien, respectfully. The preview will begin May 18th ahead of the June 22nd opening at the Hudson Theater. The play arrives in New York after winning acclaim in four different runs in the U.K., while recently completed the films A Vigilante and Life Itself opposite Oscar Isaac. Rupert Sanders says his affair with Kristen Stewart was, quote, a momentary lapse in judgment. The 46-year-old English director opened in an interview with Metro about his highly publicized 2012 fling with the 26-year-old actress who starred in his movie Snow White and Huntsman. Sanders told the publication, you never know what's coming in life. Around every corner there's something unexpected and that's life. You just have to brush yourself off and continue moving forward the best you can. He added, everyone makes mistakes. I'm bound to make more mistakes and I wouldn't expect my life to be exciting if I didn't. Sanders was married to Liberty Ross when Us Weekly published photos in July 2012 of him kissing Stewart, then 22. The incident followed the release of Snow White and the Huntsman, but the director was not asked to back uh, to back. Uh, was not asked back to helm the sequel. He told Metro, if he took people off the table for a momentary lapse, there would be no making art. Ross, who shares daughter Skyla and son Tennyson with Sanders, filed for divorce from the director in 2013. Stewart also split from her Twilight co-star Robert Pattinson, whom she was dating at the time of the affair. I just told Marie Claire in 2015, a fan reaction to the scandal, the public kind of burned me at the stake. At one point, you just let go and give yourself to your life. Sanders' first feature film since the affair, an adaptation of the Japanese manga Ghost in the Shell, opened in theaters Friday. The movie, which was plagued by whitewashing claims, stars Scarlett Johansson. Matthew Perry says he'll pass on Justin Trudeau's request for a fight rematch. The 47-year-old actor responded Saturday on Twitter after the 45-year-old Canadian Prime Minister challenged him to a rematch of a fight they had as children. Perry wrote, At Justin Trudeau, I think I will pass at your request for a rematch, kind sir, given that you currently have an army at your disposal. Trudeau asked for a rematch Friday after Perry shared the story of their fight on Jimmy Kimmel Live in March. The Prime Minister referenced Perry's friend's character Chandler Bing in his tweet. He wrote, I've been giving it some thought, and you know what? Who hasn't wanted to punch Chandler? How about a rematch at Matthew Perry? Perry grew up in Ottawa, Ontario, and attended Rockcliffe Park Public School with Trudeau. He said on the March 15th episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live that he was in the fifth grade when he and a friend beat up the future prime minister. The actor admitted, I have a story about him that I'm not proud of. My friend Chris Murray, who was also in the fifth grade in Canada, reminded me that we actually beat up Justin Trudeau. He confessed, I don't know why. I think he was excelling in a sport that we weren't as good at, so it was pure jealousy. Perry played Chandler on Friends throughout the sitcom's 10-season run on NBC. He recently portrayed Ted Kennedy in the Reels miniseries The Kennedys after Camelot, which co-stars Katie Holmes. Melissa Joan Hart says she and Ryan Reynolds were smitten with each other at one point in the 1990s. The four-year-old actress said on the Australian talk show Studio 10 that she considered dating Reynolds when they co-starred in the 1996 movie Sabrina Teenage Witch. Witch. Hart said of the Deadpool star, he wasn't the Ryan Reynolds that everybody knows these days. You can see in the clip the crazy hair. She gushed, he was very sweet, I had a boyfriend at the time, we were smitten and cute. He was adorable, he was a really, really nice guy, probably would have been a great boyfriend, and I didn't end up with the other guys, so maybe I should have taken a chance. Reynolds played Sabrina's love interest, Seth, in Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which starred Hart as a titular character. The actress previously said on Chase Chelsea Lately that Reynolds gave her a luxury watch on the last day of shooting. She recalled he was 17 and I was like 19. I was like, you're too young for me, according to E. So I stopped his car and I wasn't sure, am I going to get mad at him? I wasn't sure, so I grabbed him and started kissing him. Hard, who had also played Sabrina on seven seasons of Sabrina and the Teenage Witch series, married Mark Wilk Wilkerson in 2003 and shared three sons, Mason, Brain, and Tucker, with the musician. Reynolds shares two daughters, James and Ines, with wife actress Blake Lively. Campy Word Stadium's 75,245 strong 
had quite the view Sunday, April 2nd, for the show of shows, West, WrestleMania 33, ending with a nod to the career of an icon. The Undertaker left his hat, jacket, and gloves in the ring following a loss to Roman Reigns in a no holds bar match in the final bout. Jim Ross called the main event, which began with both wrestlers exchanging shots in and out of the ring. The dead man led off by choke slamming the big dog onto the commentator's table before calling for his foe to coincide. But instead, Reigns retaliated with the spear into the Phenoms to swing back momentum. The Undertaker's next effort was a last ride and barrage of chair attacks. The big dogs barked back with a Superman punch. The Undertaker again fought back using a choke, choke slam. He was set up his signature tombstone power driver when Reigns miraculously escaped from the Undertaker's grabs and deployed a Superman punch and another colossal spear. The dead man retaliated with a Hell's Gate, but Reigns again returned with another chain, a chair assault and threw in a Superman punch after two cringe-worthy spears. But his next spear would be the deciding blow, just as the Phenom rose gracefully during his classic introduction. He would not fall to the mat in an equal act of class. Reigns finished off the dead man with another spear to send him down. After the loss, the Undertaker departed the ring by dropping off his wardrobe and walked down the ramp floor under the watchful eye of the WWE Universe. In Raw's Universal Championship, Brock Lesnar pulled off his first victory against the champion, Goldberg. The Beast slammed the door on Goldberg's comeback run despite looking down and out for portions of the of the matchup. The Beast began the match with an incomprehensible triple German suplex, but Goldberg returned with two six spears to inca- incapacitate the Beast, forcing him to roll out of the ring. Goldberg then added another spear to drive Lesnar through the barricade. The duo climbed back into the ring, but Goldberg spoiled Lesnar's F5 and returned with the spear. Goldberg's jackhammer didn't work as planned when Lesnar stunned the champion by kicking out of it. Then things began to decline for Goldberg. Another spear attempt was blocked when Lesnar jumped over the Universal Champion, making him drill his head on the unforgiving ring post, an impossible barrage of six German suplex, and an F5 ended Goldberg's night in a quest for a 3-0 record against the Beast. It's hard to top the grandest state of them all when considering an engagement venue, but the big question wasn't the only thing in doubt during John Cena and Nikki Bella's mixed tag team match against The Miz and Marcy. The match began with Al Roker clinching the mic at center stage. After Roker departed, Miz and Marcy claimed an early edge. Cena attempted to get help at the beginning of the match by tagging in his girlfriend, but Miz's spouse denied the effort by overwhelming, uh, by overwhelming Bella from behind. The Miz repeatedly kicked a kneeling Cena in the chest as the massive crowd roared with every boot smack. He walked over to Bella and mocked her bow's you-can't-see-me move, which resulted in a vicious slap to the face. Eventually, Cena was able to tag Bella, and the couple gained control of the matchup. Bella quickly took down Marcy before diving between the ropes and into a struggle, struggling Miz. The duo's double-knuckle shift uh, shuffle was followed by Cena's attitude adjustment. Nikki then came through with a Rack Attack 2.0 for match-winning double pins. Many wrestling lovers were not surprised by what came next, but it was nevertheless a special moment when Cena opened his victory speech with a heartwarming story. The tale profiled a time when Bella was being wheeled into a surgery. During the traumatic time, Cena asked Bella if she knew that he would one day marry her. Cena then dropped to one knee on the mat and asked for Bella's hand in marriage. Cena said, I've been waiting for so long to ask you this. Stephanie Nicole Garcia Colasse, will you marry me? She quickly said yes as Cena slid the giant gem band down her finger, resulting in more romantic embraces and long kisses. Seth Rollins' knees was everyone's knees Sunday at the showcase of the Immortals. Triple H showed no mercy in a non-sanctioned match, dominating the Architect with a relentless barrage assaults on Rollins' notoriously weak leg. The man who arrived in the helicopter was flying high during the assault. Rollins roared in pain as the game did everything he could to detach the joint from his body. The King of Kings gifted Rollins a DDT on the top of the announcer's table and then slammed a steel chair into the injured leg. But the architect was just pouring some foundation for his prime construction. The newfound King Slayer, who carried a torch into the ring, returned with the running buckle bomb. He was then tripped by an interfering Stephanie McMahon, st- setting up the game for a couple of reverse four-figure leg locks. The King of Kings miffed on a second rope pedigree, leaving the architect room for a chair slam to the face in a phoenix splash. McMahon wasn't done engaging in the battle. She helped teed Rollins up 
for the game's offensive attack, but was unsuccessful as the architect kicked the king of kings into her. Rollins then showed off a pedigree after the smashing the duel through a table. That would be the decisive blow for the king of kings. Although the crowd was a bit smaller than the 101,763 watching live last year, it still basked the light of the show of shows. Hardy Boys were a big reason for the illumination. In the Rock Tag Team Championship Triple Threat ladder match, Matt and Jeff Hardy pleased fans with their stunning return to the showcase of the Immortals. It would also be just like Luke uh, Gallows, Carl Anderson, Cesario, Sheamus, Enzo Amore, and Big Cass in a trio tussle. WrestleMania's hosts, uh, The New Day, were making a cameo in the group fight when they walked down the Yellow Brick Road ramp. They were just announcing the arrival of the Icons. The New Day told fans, ladies and gentlemen, as your WrestleMania host, we must inform you that we have just received word that this ladder match has now become a fatal four-way, which means there is one more team involved in this match. Now I wonder who this fourth team could possibly be. Team Extreme's theme song blasted through the speakers as they reached the ring for the fight dooming the other squads. Big Cass uses massive frame to boost Enzo more than seven feet in the air, but the attempt was put down by, from a barrage by the brothers. Matt Hardy's twist of fave doomed Anders from the top of a ladder. Jeff used a swanton on top of a duo of ladders that were hoist the Swiss Superman and the Celtic Warrior. The Hardy Boys then grabbed the, rag tack, the raw tag team titles after Matt ascended on the ladder in the ring. In other matches, Randy Orton claimed the WWE Championship against Bray Wyatt with a killer RKO to the new face of fear. The Viper snatched SmackDown Live's prize for his brother, former brother for his ninth WWE Championship. AJ Styles Ed Shane McMahon in another showdown that was booked for revenge. Weeks before the bout, the phenomenal one threw McMahon through a car window. Team Blue general manager Daniel Bryan fired Styles for the incident, but McMahon overturned the ruling to allow him in the fight. The Phenomenal One mistakenly knocked out the match official en route, but ended the match with his phenomenal forearm to WWE's man without fear. Super Bowl 51 championship Rob Gronowski had his hands on the evening from the start. In the opening match, Gronk aided his pal Mojo Rowley, the fourth annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. Rowley claimed the victory by knocking off Jinder Mah- uh, Mahal. Mahal and Gronk had gotten into a heated altercation at the beginning of the matchup. Gronk was cheering for his friend ringside as Mahal took an early edge. Mahal then walked over to the New England's Patriot tight end, throwing a drink in his face. Gronk responded by jumping over the crowd, retaining walls, ripping off his shirt, and climbing into the ring. He then hit Mahal, incapacitating him enough for Raleigh to finish off Killian Dane and set the stage for a final bout between Raleigh and Mahal. Mahal finished NXT's only participant in quick fashion to claim the victory. Bailey defeated Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, and Nia Jax in a fatal four-way elimination match for the Raw Women's Championship at the Show of Shows. She retained her title with an excellent elbow, dropping after an untangled, untangling herself from the ropes and soaring from the rooftops. Naya Rivera poked fun at David Spade's dating rumors in an Instagram story video Saturday. The 30-year-old actress appeared to respond to reports after she was spotted getting close with the 52-year-old actor and comedian in a pool in Hawaii. She said in the clip, Holy shit, guys, the Easter Bunny and the fucking Tooth Perry are for sure dating. I just saw them. Rivera were all smiles Friday as she cuddled with Spade in the pool at the Hakiakulani Hotel in Watiki. The pair were joined by Adam Sandler and Rob Schneider, who performed with Spade that night on the Here Comes a Funny Tour. Soros told Entertainment Tonight they were very happy. They looked pretty comfortable together. The insider added, Naya was in Hawaii with a friend and met up with David. They have known each other a little bit through friends. Rivera and Spade recently appeared together in the Crackle movie Mad Families. Us Weekly reported the pair, quote, started seeing each other a couple weeks ago. Soros said, it's casual. They're having fun. Rivera filed for divorce from husband Ryan Dorsey in November after two years of marriage. She shares 18-month-old son Josie with the actor, while Spade is dad to 8-year-old daughter Harper with ex-partner Jillian Grace. Mariska Hargitay delighted fans by reuniting with Christopher Maloney for his birthday over the weekend. The 53-year-old actress shared a sweet photo with her former Law & Order SVU co-star while celebrating the actor's 56th birthday Friday. She captioned the picture on Instagram, Happy birthday at Chris underscore Maloney, PFL. Uh, Hargitay and Maloney played partners Olivia Benson and Elliot Stabler on Law & Order SVU. 
The actress still stars on the NBC series, while Maloney left the show in 2011 after 12 seasons. The actor said of his dynamic with Hargitay on Inside the Actor's Studio in 2016, there was always an unspoken shorthand to what we were doing. There's a lot to be said for that when you're working with someone for 16 hours a day. Uh, he also added, oh my God, we were always cracking up, constantly trying to make each other laugh. You know, not in certain scenes, but uh, yeah, a constant bursting chops. Hargitay and Maloney previously reunited in February following Valentine's Day and shared a holiday photo together in December. The actor told Arrington Weekly in May that he'd like to return to SVU before the series ends. He said, I always present that I'd be open to doing the last few episodes, so that's really all I have to say about that. It's not up to me. I'll just say that. I've said my piece on it. Jennifer Lopez introduced new beau Alex Rodriguez to her mom over the weekend. The 47-year-old singer was spotted Sunday with the 41-year-old retired Major League Baseball star and mom Guadalupe Rodriguez in New York, according to TMZ. Lopez was all smiles as she strolled arm in arm with Rodriguez with her mom by her side. She previously met Rodriguez's sister, Susie Dunanen, who shared a photo with the ancient mama singer in March. Dunand captioned the picture with the Spanish word for sister-in-law any given Friday, um, hashtag JLo. Lopez and Rodriguez were first linked in March and enjoyed a getaway to the Bahamas the same month. The former New York Yankees shortstop confirmed his romance with Lopez on The View last week. He says, it's obvious we're dating, we're having a great time. She's an amazing, amazing girl, one of the smartest human beings I've ever met, and also an incredible mother. The star added, she's just like simple things. She's a very, very simple person. She loves her family. Lopez shares twins Max and Emmy with ex-husband Mark Anthony, while Rodriguez had his dad to daughters Natasha and Ella with ex-wife Cynthia Sicurtis. The couple reportedly bonded over their love for family. Prince Jackson got a new tattoo honoring dad Michael Jackson over the weekend. The 20-year-old aspiring producer, born Michael Joseph Jackson Jr., paid tribute to his father by getting a tattoo of the late singer on his calf. He captioned a video on Instagram of his new ink, thanks at Demograph Inc. for sitting nine hours with me for such an incredible and beautiful tattoo. I will be posting more of this. The tattoo showed a winged version of Michael in one of his signature poses. Prince followed up Monday by posting a close-up picture of the bottom portion of the tattoo. He wrote, the details are incredible. Prince is the eldest son of Michael, who is, who is also dad to 19-year-old Paris, born Paris Michael Catherine Jackson, and 15-year-old Blanket, born Prince Michael Jackson II. Prince and his sister got matching yin-yang tattoos last week. Paris wrote, Sometimes I feel like my big brother and I always think the same thoughts. He just doesn't have a filter and always vocalizes them. Though total opposites, like my Guko and I, the inseparable yin and yang work together, finding and causing balance within each other. Prince said in an interview with Good Morning America in March that it took a while for him and his siblings to realize the extent of his dad's fame. Michael Jackson died at the age of 50 in 2009. Prince said, even after we realized he was the king of pop, even to this day, I don't think it holds the same weight to us as to others because he was our dad. And that was your entertainment report for Tuesday, April 4th, 2017. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.